In this video, we're going to see that factoring is just counting. When you're studying algebra and you're factoring polynomials and other algebraic expressions, it's helpful to have an overall perspective on what you're doing. And viewing factoring as just counting is one such perspective. It's not the only way to look at factoring, but it's a very helpful way to look at factoring. For our first glimpse at how factoring is just counting, let's put algebra aside just for a moment and look at what it means to factor a number. So here we have the number 6 expressed as a grid of dots. And what do we see here? How many dots are there in the first column? Two. Okay, so I think we're counting twos. Or in other words, the number 6 can be viewed as being made up of twos. Well, how many twos do we have? Three, right? One, two, three. We're counting twos and there are three of them. Ah, so there it is. There's six factored, right? It's three twos. Now let me make two quick comments on notation. Here's the first comment. We know that when we write two numbers next to each other, that means multiply. But that was not the first notation that we, that we learned, right? Way back in the day in elementary school, we learned that six equals three times two. Oh, you mean we're counting twos? We have two three times. Get it? All right. Here's the other comment on notation. Notice I put each of the two factors in parentheses. That was a little bit of overkill. We really just need to put one of the two factors in parentheses. We need at least one of them in parentheses, right? That would be a disaster. Okay, why am I doing a little bit of overkill here? I want to make a point. Later on, when we look at the algebra examples, it's going to be important to get the parentheses in the right place. And in fact, viewing factoring as just counting helps you get those parentheses in the right place. Why? Because you understand what you're doing, right? Instead of just, oh, I hope I got the parentheses in the right place. So for now, here's what I want you to keep in mind. Each one of these numbers is one number. So two, that's what we're counting. That's one number. And three, that's how many twos we have. That's one number. All right, one more point to make before we move on to the algebra. Let's factor this number. Oh, that's the same number, right? Okay, but I turn the grid vertically just to make this suggestion. Maybe instead of counting twos here, we're counting threes, right? So in other words, the number six can be viewed as being made up of threes, and there are two of them. Okay, here's the real punchline. It doesn't matter what order we write the factors in. And indeed, it doesn't really matter how we turn it. Either way, we turn the grid, and either way we write the numbers, we can view it as counting twos, and there are three of them, or counting threes, and there are two of them. All right, so when we look at this, three times two, we don't really know which one we're counting, twos or threes. Now let's turn to algebra. Consider the expression BA, and here's the question. What are we counting? Well, hopefully you said we're counting A's and there are B of them, or you said we're counting B's and there are A of them. We don't know at this point. It's ambiguous. Here's a grid. In each column are A dots, and in each row are B dots. So perhaps we're counting A's or columns and there are B of them, or maybe we're counting B's, or in other words, rows, and there are A of them. We don't know at this point. It's ambiguous. And if you want a concrete example, we could think of A as being 2 and B as being 3. We could have this same conversation with the quantity CA, right? It's ambiguous whether we're counting C's or whether we're counting A's. And if we want something concrete, we can think of C as being 5. And A is, of course, still 2. Now, let me remove the ambiguity by putting a plus sign here. All right, so in the first term, we're counting A's or B's. In the second term, we're counting A's or C's. But overall, what's the only thing we could possibly be counting? A's. And if you're really sharp, my question, what are we counting, could be rephrased, what can we factor out? But that's not nearly as fun, right? It's more fun to ask, what are we counting? Well, the answer is A's. And now the question is, how many A's do we have? Well, we have B A's here and C A's here, so altogether we must have B plus C A's. Here's the picture. We got a grid, B A's. We add CAs. Well, how many A's do we have? Clearly, B plus CAs. So we're just counting A's, otherwise known as factoring out the A. Factoring is just counting. Do you see it? We're just counting A's. All right, and let's take a look at the number example really quickly. This is what it would look like in the concrete number example. We're counting twos. Right, two is the A's, 
and we have three of them here first. We're counting twos here, of course, and we have five of them. Well, then how many twos do we have all together? Three plus five of them. Neat, huh? So factoring's just counting. Now, let me make one quick comment here. We started off by counting A's, and we found out that we had B plus C of them, and we thereby factored this expression. Do you agree? But do you notice something? We got something for free. It's true that, yes, we were counting A's, and we have B plus C of them, but check it out. It turns out we were counting B plus C's. We didn't know that at the beginning. We were counting B plus C's, and how many do we have? A of them. Ah, we didn't know this, but we were actually counting B plus C's, rows. And how many rows do we have? A of them. So when we say factoring is just counting, it might be more precise to say factoring is revealing what we're counting. Because when all's said and done, we say, okay, what is BA plus CA really? Well, it's a bunch of A's. How many A's? B plus C of them. Or it's a bunch of B plus C's. How many B plus C's? A of them. Cool, huh? And by the way, we could have had this whole conversation if these letters were flipped, right? Now we still factor out the A, or in my preferred language, we're counting A's. And how many A's do we have? B plus C of them. And again, when all's said and done, we say, oh, we were actually counting B plus C's all along, and we have A of them. So that's what factoring does. Factoring is counting, but more precisely, it's revealing what we're counting. What you have at the beginning, you show what it really is. It's really a bunch of A's, and there's B plus C of them, or it's really a bunch of B plus C's, and there are A of them. Here's an example. I'm going to ask you, what can we factor out? But I'm going to ask that question in a much more intuitive way. Here goes. What are we counting? Hopefully you can see that we're counting X squared plus 13's. Well, knowing that we're counting x squared plus 13's, the question becomes, how many do we have? Well, we have 3x of them here and 5 of them here, so all together we have 3x plus 5 x squared plus 13's. Factoring is just counting. Now, I can't resist. Be a little bit goofy here. Imagine the x squared plus 13's being apples. Well, we have 3x apples plus five apples, how many apples do we have all together? Well, obviously 3x plus five apples, right? And if you want it to be even more concrete, we could let x be, say, two. So that three times two is six. We have six apples plus five apples. Isn't that six plus five, or in other words, 11 apples? That's what we're doing here. We're just counting. If you think about factoring as counting, it makes things much more intuitive, and it helps you avoid wrong answers like this. Right? This doesn't even make sense. Why? Because we're counting x squared plus 13's and the 3x plus 5 is how many we have, right? The 3x plus 5 is one number. The 6 plus 5 is one number. So we know that should be in parentheses because in essence it's one number. Do you see that? All right. And also, by the way, if this were a minus sign here rather than a plus sign, we're still counting, but instead of adding apples, we'd be subtracting apples. So instead of 3x plus 5, we would have 3x minus 5. Here's another example. Now, if we ask ourselves, what are we counting? There's nothing that we're obviously counting across all four terms. Or to rephrase that, there's nothing we can factor out of all four terms. So a common technique is to try to group the terms and then see, is there anything that we're counting within each group? So looking at just these first two terms, what are we counting? I think we're counting 3x's. So once we decide that we're counting three x's, the question becomes, how many do we have? Well, we have one here minus four x of them there. So that's one minus four x, three x's. Okay, plus what are we counting in these last two terms? I think we're counting y's. Now the question becomes, how many y's do we have? Well, we have one of them there minus four x of them there. And now we ask ourselves yet again, what are we counting? And I think at this point, the problem looks like the previous example. Do you agree? Here we were counting x squared plus 13s. Well, here we're counting what? 1 minus 4x's. How many 1 minus 4x's do we have? 
3 X of them here plus Y of them here. That's 3 X plus Y of them all together. And one last comment here. In the previous example, we started by, by counting X squared plus 13s and we ended up getting 3 X plus 5 of them. Notice what this final factorization also gives us. It tells us, by the way, we were also counting 3x plus 5s, even though we didn't realize it at the beginning, and we have x squared plus 13 of them. Similarly here, we end up finding out that we were counting 1 minus 4x's and that we have 3x plus y of them. We were also counting 3x plus y's and there were 1 minus 4x of them. Raise your hand if at the beginning of the problem you realized we were counting 3x plus y's. My hand's not up. If your hand's up, then you have really good insight. That's what factoring gives us. It's just counting, but more precisely, it's revealing what we're counting. One last comment. Often when factoring, it's hard to do the counting directly, so we rely on formulas or methods to achieve the counting for us. For example, in each of these cases, I think it's hard to do the counting ourselves, so there are methods or formulas to get us the counting x squared minus 7 x plus 10 turns out to be a bunch of x minus 2's. How many? x minus 5 of them. Or we can look at it as being a bunch of x minus 5's and there's x minus 2 of them. Similarly over here. So even when we don't do the counting ourselves directly, the method or the formula still achieves the same result. Namely, it reveals what we're counting. Well, I hope this framework, viewing factoring as just counting, or more precisely as revealing what we're counting, is giving you some good intuition about what factoring really is. And hopefully it will help you get those parentheses in the right place. Happy factoring!